Hello, everyone, and um, thank you for joining this uh, session today. So today in this session, I want to talk about SCP S4 HANA and how SCP S4 HANA is a digital core. I'm going to talk about SAP Business One, uh, SAP S4 HANA from the technology perspective, what are the different uh, changes um, in the technology. I'm also going to take some use cases. I will take some example uh, and how SAP S4 HANA is. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, and I appreciate again uh, for everyone to join this session. Thank you. Let me start uh, briefly um, uh, introducing myself. Um, so my name is Dilip Saad. I'm president of Kabir Consulting, Kabir Infotech and other companies. Uh, in my professional experience, uh, I primarily work with three companies. I was associate partner with IBM in the US in New York office. I was in a director with Accenture and Capgemini in the New York office. And I've been doing SAP past several years. And these are some of the companies where I did SAP implementation. I obviously don't work for anyone, um, but I do teaching. I still teach SAP. Um, and uh, I'm also at the advisory board of a few other companies where I work. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer and a few other things. Okay, so coming back to SAP S4 HANA and the digital core. And we'll talk about uh, SAP S4 HANA as a technology, what is different, um, some of the key differences, and uh, next step as far as SAP S4 HANA is concerned. Now, each one of you may be aware that when you talk about SAP journey, so we had uh, SAP uh, R3, then we had SAP ECC, and uh, then we had SAP. Uh, S4 HANA. SAP S4 HANA came in 2015. Uh, that is the evolution journey as far as uh, SAP is concerned. And um, so SAP S4 HANA has been in the market for almost uh, two, two and a half years now. Now, We'll talk about uh, what if IT did more than just to keep the light on, how IT can be catalyst for innovation, which basically means how SAP system going forward and in the past too can be even bigger catalyst for driving the business processes better. Because at the end of the day, everything is about business and how we can make um, you know business run better and uh, what did the IT department lead the transition to the digital core? So how we can, uh, how the different companies can adopt to SAP S4 HANA. <clears throat> now, when we talk about SAP S4 HANA, among all the things, um, there are a few important things. So as a simpler data model, so uh, SAP S4 HANA, SAP S4 HANA, let me make it uh, bigger fonts. Uh, so SAP S4 HANA runs only on SAP HANA database. So that is the one very important thing to understand that it runs only on uh, SAP HANA database. No other database it is supported. So simpler data model because SAP S4 HANA runs only on S4 HANA database. The second one is improved user experience. So SAP S4 HANA has, has Fury uh, user interface as well. So SAP S4 HANA has a Fury interface um, along with SAP GUI. So SAP GUI is still there, 
but SAP want uh, everything to might move to uh, Fury over the period of time. So as far as the business users are concerned, and the uh, Fury is still there as far as uh, you know doing different uh, business process uh, configuration and programming and other things. But SAP Fury is going to be the user interface um, in the future. So for SAP S4 HANA, we have Fury interface. So by having a simple data model, uh, we'll talk about how the data model is simple and how it becomes simpler. So we'll talk about that. And because we have improved user experience, which basically means you have a role-based Fury applications, you can have a better productivity in the business. So that's a very important thing to understand. Now, what does it mean to simplify? So this is a very uh, simple but very powerful example of uh, change of uh, SAP S4 HANA uh, to the typical ERP uh, when we look at any typical ERP. So what does that basically mean is that earlier, you know, when we are having sending a photograph with someone far away, what will you do? Well, you have a camera, you have a film, you go to dark room, you go to paper, and then you have to do all those, uh, you know, cleaning and all those different uh, forming processes, and then go to postal service and then go to recipient. So you have all those different uh, complicated and many layers of business processes which are involved. But now, that is not the care. Now you have camera, you have iPhone, or any other smartphone, go to internet, and send to recipient instantaneously, or in an extremely short period of time. So all the different, ultimately we're sending picture. The end goal is same. Here also we're sending the picture, we're creating a picture and sending to recipient. Here also we're creating a picture and sending to recipient, but the whole process has drastically changed it become very, very fast. And it is not just the fast, it is architecture is reduced. All those different layers are gone. We just have only two layer, camera, internet, recipient. And that's a very important thing to understand when we look at the SAP S4 HANA background. Now this whole architecture of the data processing has drastically changed because it has a HANA database in the background. So now let's look at the example of the simpler data model. So when we look at the simpler data model, these are, so in our uh, uh, ECC or R3, so when we're looking at uh, some of the master data, some of the transaction data, some of uh, other uh, material master and others, so you know, like we know in material master, we have Mark, we have Mart, we have March, we have MRD, uh, in the inventory uh, movement documents or material document, we have MKPF, MSAG, and these are the primary tables. And then you have uh, so many of the historical tables. So you have MSDKS, MSDF, these are all different tables for history. And you have all these different tables for aggregates, a huge number of tables where aggregates are being stored. So these are the master data table, these are our you know, aggregate tables, and these are some of the transaction table. So if we divide aggregate tables, transactional table, master data table, we have all these different jungle of tables to hold aggregates, to hold history, to hide information about documents, and about the master data. Now, if we come back to SAP S4 HANA background, or SAP S4 HANA world, where we are using the SAP HANA database, then everything gets reduced to one document that is called MetDoc. And that has, and then for the material master without stock aggregates, we have a mark and mard. So that basically means there's a huge amount of reduction of number of tables. In fact, there is a ratio of about 10%. That basically means if you have 100 tables, or uh, if you have 100 uh, terabyte of data, then you're left with the 10 terabytes. So 90% of the database is gone. So all your transaction table, aggregate table, which you are using and running for the inventory management, all these different tables 
for aggregates and history and subtotals are gone. They are not needed. Now in SAP S4 HANA, the number of tables. Now that is an example and the meaning of the simpler database is. Because with SAP S4 HANA, database has drastically been reduced. And number of tables are reduced. And because number of tables are reduced, and hence the speed, hence the, it do the fast quick processing, and overall total cost of ownership and maintenance. So simpler data model impact where? So simpler data model has impact on technology and has impact on capability. In the change in technology, that basically means no aggregate and redundant data. So a lot of those aggregate tables um, are not needed. So num numerous, numerous number of tables are being reduced or those tables are no, no more needed as far as SAP S4 HANA is concerned. And because the number of table is uh, less, so you, there's no locking issue. If you remember, in a classical RDBMS, because you have so many dependent primary key, secondary, and all that tables, so that leads to the different kind of locking. So there's no locking. Uh, granularity of the processes, you can have a faster and much more in-depth understanding of the data. And the capability, and what is the benefit of that is, of course, operations in real time. So because you have aggregate table, historical tables, all those tables are gone, not needed, are not there. So your operations and processing with the database is happening in the real time. Elimination of data reconciliation. So you are not having a multiple set of the data, data A with versus data B. You, rec you are reconciling data A with the data B and so on and so forth. You just have one data. Uh, you have a better precision and you can have a better simulation and prediction. So the whole, that simple city of the data model actually brings huge amount of impact on technology because it is 90% of the data is gone. Thousands and thousands of tables are gone. And that leads to immense business process capability in terms of being a real time, in, in terms of elimination of different uh, reconciliation, etc. So a digital interface. So the, the one very important difference between SAP RP and SAP S4 HANA is that the database. So in the backend, the database is only only SAP S4 HANA. There is no other database which is there in the system. And then apart from that also, we have a digital interface for the world, which basically means in the new system, we have something called um, um, you know, we can have a Fury interface. So going forward in the system, we have a Fury system, and uh, you know, this is our classical SAP GUI screen, which I'm very sure each one of you would be uh, aware. And then from the Fury system, we are going back, uh, from the SAP GUI system, we are going to the Fury system, which is a, completely uh, different uh, system uh, and completely different uh, uh, interface. So Fury is a role-based, uh, much more like an app uh, interface. So it looks different. Another benefit is, okay, where is this? Okay, so why SAP has come up with this interface? Now, what is behind it? We need to understand that. That why SAP has come with a Fury interface and what is the advantage of Fury? So one of the biggest advantages of the Fury is basically that it makes your SAP independent of hardware. Because now you have a laptop, you have a desktop, you have a smartphone. Now if you're using SAP GUI, you cannot use SAP GUI on a smartphones or in most of the tablets. So when the most and more computing is going on the phone, more and more computing is going on uh, tablets, and SAP GUI is not supported. 
So that that gives an, a huge amount of constraint for SAP to provide the computing capability on the new generation hardware. So SAP Fury is independent of hardware. It can run on desktop, it can run on laptop, it can run on smartphones, it can also run on any tablets. So it makes Omni presents any kind of a database, you can access SAP, which was a significant limitation with SAP GUI. Example, uh, soft uh, core closing. Uh, so which basically means uh, when you're using uh, SAP S4 HANA, because your data model has been improved, because you're putting your information in the real time, so that is why you can do financial closing anytime. Traditional data, your closed batches and consolidation batches, and you have a lot of different activity that cannot begin unless period is end. You have to run multiple batch run dependency, batch bottlenecks, and different uh, other set of activity which you have to create. Now, when you're using SAP S4 HANA, for example, in case of financial closing, we can have a real-time system with the key KPI instantly refreshed. Now, instantly refreshed basically means earlier we have a SAP R3 and you have BI. You do not need BI necessarily because you can just have the uh, you know OLAP system and transaction system into the one system. So that basically means your information is available to you real time. So previously, if you're using BI, so that basically means you're, you're storing the data into, uh, in the ERP, in ECC, and from ECC, you're sending this data into BI. And then from the BI, you're running the report. And data in the BI, in most of the time, is never real time. It's almost never real time. It's always going through batch programs. And there's always a time lag. Now that time lag could be of, you know, one hour or five hour or 10 hour or 24 hour or six weeks or one week, but there is always time lag. But when you're using SAP S4 HANA, you're not necessarily looking for any uh, out of uh, independent SAP uh, BI system. So you can have a separate uh, SAP S4 HANA uh, in SAP S4 HANA because your reporting system and transaction system is only one system. Therefore, your data is instantly refreshed and all your reporting and KPI you can run in the real time. You do not need any batch program. So the in the in the real production environments, they have numerous, numerous, numerous production uh, batch processing. A batch processing a, it is a batch processing, so it's not real time. So it, it, you're running certain transaction or certain frequency. So your ability to get information in the real time is absolutely not possible when you're running a batch, a batch program. So you can only get information whatever the frequency of the batch program is. But with SAP S4 HANA, you don't need batch programs. So that basically means the information which is available to you is available to you in the real time because you don't need any batch job, et cetera. And then you can have a better reporting visibility. So there's no time lag, there's not a data of yesterday data or one week old data or one month old data. It is actually continuous data is a real time data. So all your profitability analysis and other tasks you can do in the real time. Now we'll take another example uh, of post good issue. So many of you might be aware of post good issue. Post good issue is a transaction which you run when you're shipping the product to a customer. In the shipping process, uh, post good issue is one of the last step. Uh, many times there are different business challenges. You are running uh, a 24 seven shipping department or you have a, your warehouse and distribution center is running 24 seven. You have a high volume, you have thousands and thousands of shipments being done. And a lot of these shipments are a small size, one piece, two piece, low value items. So you have thousands and thousands of transactions 
and a lot of these transactions are low run. A lot of consumer goods company, many other companies does that and it's a very common scenario in such companies. And material is also shared in multiple plant, multiple shipments. You need to frequently uh, run parallelly because in an eight hour shift, you are making it thousands of shipments. Now you are experiencing that post good issue is failing. Now post good issue is failing because your batch stock is locked. Because when you're using batch stock, there's a locking process. System locks it for the processing. So you can only go sequentially. So good moments is not posted and, uh, and that, pro pro uh, that has a serious problem in terms of making the whole good issue process very, very slow. Now, when the good issue process is very, very slow, good issue process is a dependent process. Without good issue, you cannot create a shipping document. You cannot print bill of lading. You cannot print packing list. You cannot print many other shipment documents. So your truck driver may be waiting outside and uh, waiting for your PGI to happen. And when PGI will happen, then you know your printing will happen and only printing will happen. Only then truck can leave. Truck cannot go without uh, taking the shipment documents with it. So it's a serious problem. It is actually a, a bottleneck. It's a challenge uh, in a current uh, ECC environment. Now, when you're looking uh, uh, in uh, SAP S4 HANA, so what you do in ECP 6.0, you do a repetitive uh, attempt to PGI unless there's no log. You do a best background job. You reschedule that, and you do a configuration change, a best determination, best strategy, and all that. What are the resolution in SAP S4 HANA? Now, SAP S4 HANA solves this problem completely. The batch stock table, oops. Okay. So batch stock tables are no longer exist. Only the material movement need to be created without any actual stock locking. So because a lot of those batch stock tables are gone, they are not there. Therefore, by default, there is no locking. So now you can run transaction in parallel without having any issues with the locking problem. Earlier, because there is inherent locking in some of those stock tables, therefore, you cannot run the transaction in parallel. So you have to wait for one to finish and then another one goes in and that delay the whole process. But now in SAP S4 HANA, because those tables are not there, they are gone. Therefore, uh, you know, there is no locking and then, you know, system take care of by itself. So that basically means what is the value? Reduce transaction processing time, saving the money, no carrier detention fees, you're paying less. It may be charges, over delays, late customer penalty, rejections and reduce risk of user working around the system. So the thing which could have been done in eight hours, you're finishing in 12 hours, you're fix fixing in 16 hours. So, you know, you're paying more to the carrier, you're paying more to the, to the business users, you're, you're deploying more people, and obviously you're delaying the overall delivery experience to your customers. And now with SAP S4 HANA, that is all gone. Now, Reduce IT complexity. This is another important thing to understand because number of tables are reduced. So that basically means database becomes simple. The size of database becomes extremely reduced. So a lot of the database is not there. So it is reduced storage, less replication, less network load, faster retired and failover. Now, example, if you are using, uh, you know, traditional of around 600 GB data, then on HANA, it become 118. With SAP S4 HANA, it become 42.0 GB, and it's further reduced to 8.4 GB. That basically means with SAP S4 HANA platform, with the SAP S4 HANA database, your database footprint is completely reduced. This is an example of how much of reduction of database is actually possible in the system. 
and that is very important for us to understand that um, how much the data actually can be reduced and and because the reduction of the database you know it's not just the complexity your maintenance cost your storage cost and all different overheads of the uh, managing a huge amount of the data is drastically reduced the second thing which is very important is that there is a uh, landscape consolidation so landscape consolidation basically means that earlier we have a ecc one box and crm on other box and ap on other box you do not need all these separate boxes so ERP and CRM and APO, they could be part of the same landscape. Earlier, that was a serious problem. If you're using ERP, that is one box. So you have production box for ERP. Then when you're using CRM, there is another box for CRM. And then you have middleware to connect with it. Then you have APO, then you have another box for APO. And then you're connecting your ECC with APO. And then between them, there is another middleware. And that's a serious problem. Because with all these different landscape and different system, integration is a problem. It's not real time. There's a technical challenges. There's a cost of implementation. There's a cost of integration, cost of making sure those integration working fine. There's a continuous maintenance cost. It's all gone. Because now, your ERP, your CRM, your APO, your other system get into one box. That is what this slide represents. Now, another thing, so there's a uh, landscape uh, consolidation. So you don't need different boxes. So that basically means your cost of implementation, your cost of integration, and all that is drastically reduced. The second thing is industry solution consideration. Many of you might be aware that earlier, the retail system, uh, if you're using IS retail, and the non-IS retail cannot be on the same system. They have to be on two different boxes. I have seen many clients myself where they have a retail business and they have a you know non-retail business. And for the retail, they have to have a separate uh, system. They have to have a separate ERP, separate instance, separate box. And then for uh, for a non-retail business, they have a separate box because you cannot have a two industry solutions in the, in one box. And that was a serious flaw. There was a serious problem. But now with SAP S4 HANA, if you're using IS retail, if you're using this other uh, non-IS business, both can be in the same box. So that leads to uh, consideration of industry solutions. Uh, in SAP S4 HANA, a 1709 update, which happened last year in September 2017. So these are uh, uh, existing, uh, so you can have a in, in industry in wholesale into one box, uh, sales into the same box, into LVs in one box, manufacturing one box, quality management, extended warehouse, PLM, uh, Fury, they are all in the same box. But now uh, they did a new innovation in uh, 2017. So your transportation is also embedded. Your uh, consumer product industry like catch waste management is indebted. Commodity management is, uh, which is extended pricing is in, uh, integrated. Your service core, which you add on, is also integrated. Uh, manufacturing, which is APO and within configuration is integrated. And then your machine learning is integrated. Uh, procurement functions is integrated also as a part of 1709 application. So these are some of the new enhancements which we have in uh, SAP S4 HANA 1709. How do I plan for SAP S4 HANA adoption? 
So let us talk about that. So we talk about uh, the change in database. We discuss that SAP S4 HANA necessarily only works on SAP HANA database. No other database is supported. It has a, apart from SAP GUI, for the user perspective, it also with Fury. Uh, we also talk about the database is drastically reduced. So when we say database is drastically reduced, it basically, um, the, the size of the database, a lot of tables are gone. Um, you have a you know, huge amount of tables, uh, which is not there in the systems. And then how do I plan for SAP S4 HANA adoption? So SAP S4 HANA deployment strategy overview. Uh, how can we deploy that? So first prepare users and system, check your identity, uh, readiness, your value advisor, prototyping, which need to be done. Then another one is a uh, adopt custom code. So that is called, um, you have to see how much a custom code you have. Address your efficiencies. If you have a, like, what are the processes where you have a problems and what is the improvement areas. So that uh, is very important. And then adopt code to SAP S4 HANA. Now, when you are transitioning to SAP S4 HANA, first could be a, a new implementation. So the, your existing uh, SAP is, uh, you know, uh, is just uh, treated as a legacy. And then there's a complete new implementation. Uh, it's called Greenfield implementation. You can also have a uh, Brownfield implementation, which is basically a conversion, or you can have a landscape transformation. A lot of people do new implementation, actually. Then we have a deployment destination. Either you can do in-premises. Oops. You can do on cloud. You can do hybrid. Now, building your journey for SAP S4 HANA, so which basically means, first and foremost, have a business case. Business case basically means business processes where you have a problem and challenges which you think using SAP S4 HANA, those processes can be changed, can be improved. What are the new capabilities, new functions, new pro, uh, new new um, business value add, uh, adopting to some of those processes. So you build your business case. So that is the, uh, the point number uh, one. And then discover your destination, uh, which basically means you can do your, there is a SAP transformation navigator. So you can see SAP has put on a roadmap for each of the component in your system landscape, which basically means for your ECC, if you're using CRM, if you're using uh, APO or other system, and then plan your move. SAP readiness check. So learn the technical requirement and actions for a system conversion to SAP S4 HANA. SAP S4 HANA uh, adoption path. So there are actually three paths. Uh, the one is um, uh, new implementation. So new or existing customer implementing a completely uh, new SAP S4 on a system with initial data load. Uh, the old system is considered as a legacy system. Then custom conversion or system conversion, uh, that is basically conversion of your existing SAP uh, system to SAP S4 HANA. So you take your, your ERP system and then you convert to it. And second one is only that landscape uh, transformation, which basically means uh, you have uh, you know ERP system region A, ERP system region B, ERP system region C, and then it all goes into uh, in central ERP or SAP S4 HANA instances. So these are three uh, adoption paths which you have uh, in SAP possibility. SAP S4 HANA, uh, complete consistent choice. So, um, so SAP S4 HANA, whether used on cloud, whether used on on-premises, you have the same code in both. It's not that in-premises system is different. 
and cloud system is different both are same they use same functionality same code same data model same user experience so it is not that the system which you use in cloud is different than in premises and vice versa they are actually exactly same code same data model same user experience everything is same it's just the one is offered on cloud and second one is offered on premises the right solution for each customer so you can work uh, in a saas environment uh, that is option available to you uh, in which uh, you can have a completely subscription licensing and the second one you can have a private cloud in the private cloud sap has uh, um, you know we call it aws amazon web services you have a microsoft azure uh, my, uh, google cloud so all of them are uh, sap certified uh, cloud uh, service provider so you can use uh, uh, any of those um, you know sap cloud or aws cloud or azure cloud or google cloud and you can buy licenses and you can host those licenses on the private cloud saas basically means here you are basically doing subscription here you are taking license you are hosting into a different third party uh, system like uh, aws microsoft azure etc um then we have a transition um, one of the important thing is uh, what happened to my customization if you have a custom code then how i have uh, and leverage my existing uh, code to a different data model so you know currently you may be using it any classical rdbms oracle or whatever but in the future you're going to use sap hana and the number of tables are reduced and a change and complete different data model so how do i base my backward compatibility for my customization so in sap we have something called uh, cts code uh, data services so with the most customization can continue to run on cts because of the cts cts is core data services and uh, cts basically is a virtualization layer in the architecture of s4 hana uh, that present all the old object as a view so that the custom code will continue to run but behind the scene hana is still computing the necessary aggregates on the fly so cts will allow you to work in most cases as it is there may be some objects so that won't work with the cts which is possible even if you do customer would like to have an opportunity with the new functions new capabilities um so then in that case you can change that code and you can rewrite that code or you can remove that code as necessary so using a code data services which is cts you can take care of your customization with the backend database major milestones in sap s4 on adoption so prepare explore realize deploy prepare of course you find out the scenarios you find out the landscape um you can do your value discovery workshop which basically means you can verify that uh, you know what kind of uh, business processes you need to change what is your value add what kind of changes uh, are there into it explore uh, in the explore few things uh identify the implemented scenario what scenario fit into in your situation you want a completely uh, new implementation or you want something different uh, what is your strategy what is the road map uh, what is the technical architecture migration plan um, which migration plan you want to adopt to what is the value elements you can go with that and then you realize and deploy so that basically means you can have a either migrate existing you do a system conversion or landscape transformation or you can have a completely new installation of sap s4 hana either on premises or on cloud and you implement new innovation new processes there are many new processes uh, which is not there in ecc lot of processes are simplified 
and then you can implement additional industry or line of business packages. You can go back to SAP www.sap.com as for next. You can learn more about it. And uh, so, this is my name, uh, Dilip Saad. My email address, if you want to make a note, so my email address is Dilip, D I L I P, at kabeerconsulting.com. And uh, my phone number is a US number, so it's 973 885 7245. So you are very welcome to write an email to me or call me, text me, WhatsApp me. I use WhatsApp all the time or you can email to me. So let me repeat again. It's a dilip at kabeerconsulting.com or my number 973-885-7245. Thank you so much uh, for listening to this conversation. And uh, I appreciate and uh, thank you and talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.